Hey everybody out there, Timothy here with Mana Rocks. We're in another Corset 2019 draft. Got just a couple more of these in me. Not too many. Unfortunately, my last video that I trophied with um, didn't go so well, so uh, I won't be able to upload that. But I 3 0 with a pretty sweet black green deck. Um, that deck was basically the nuts, though. I had Demon of Catastrophes, Thorn, uh, El whatever the elf is called, Thorn Lieutenant, I think it is, Transmorgifying Wand. It, it was, it was very good. Um, ooh, this is a foil Sarkin. Sarkin's not even that good, but if you can control the game, it does have an ultimate that wins, and it's a rummager, and lets you prioritize dragons over other things. Plus, there's not even a card that I'm super happy about first picking otherwise. Maybe Brawl Bash Ogre. Or Shock? Shock is good, but it's not great. Also, this is a Foil Sarkin. It's probably worth some tickets. Ooh, Gravedigger, Meteor Golem, Thud, I guess. Starcrown Stag. Some good ones here. Real question is, do I want to pick up the Ramp card or the Grindier card? I think with a Sarkin, which I'm not going to force this Sarkin. I'm not going to force it at all, but definitely try to play it. I'm leaning towards Gravedigger just because green, or I'm sorry, uh, red black tends to be pretty good, I think. Even if you don't get the sacrifice deck, I like it quite a bit, but Meteor Golem's also kind of good. I wish this was a dragon that destroyed a permanent because then it would go awesomely with my first pick. Um, This is actually kind of a tough pick. I'm kind of curious what people would pick here. I might actually just pick up Meteor Golem. It's colorless. It keeps me open. Um, Gravedigger's good. But I think they're probably about the same power level. Strangling Spores is a nice one here. Would have been exceptionally good if I had picked up uh, Gravedigger. Just two on-color cards would have been nice. I think the next best pick to Strangling Spores is like Psychic Symbiont or Skyscanner. And I could pick up Skyscanner again for the same reason, just to stay open. But I like picking up removal when I can. Not that Strangling Spores is like the best removal spell or anything, but it's pretty good. Ooh, Runic Armasaur. Also Dragon Egg to go with my Sarkin, but whatever, right? Colossal Dreadmaul, Goblin Instigator are both good. Thornhide Wolves is surprisingly good in this format. I like it. I'm going to pick up Runic Armasaur. This might be a sign that green is open. This card's not, like, amazing or anything, but it shuts down one or two cards in the format if your opponent has them, and it also blocks very well, and could be a sign that green is open if I'm getting one fourth pick, right? Again, not, not like, an amazing card by any means, but it's good against cards like uh, Dried Green Seeker, things like that. Alright, first kind of dud of a pack, not really anything amazing here that I'm Super interested in. Uh, looks like red is flowing pretty nicely, although double cast and crash through are kind of whatever. Greenwood Sentinels, not fantastic. I'd already mentioned once that I think Thornhide Wolves is pretty, pretty decent in this format. The five toughness matters against some of the removal spells like Electrify and, excuse me, Spit Flame or Spitfire or whatever it's called. There's a Tranquil Expanse here, but I haven't really seen any white outside of that second pick Star Crown Stag. There's Blood Divination, but we don't really have a setup for that. I'm just going to take Thornhide Wolves here. Card is fine. And, I mean, we're pretty open to move in any direction. I have one black card and one red card, and we can ditch them pretty easily. Two green cards, which are fine, but not exactly bombs. And then Meteor Golem will go in basically any deck we play. Except an all-in aggro deck, which we are not going to be drafting an all-in aggro deck, given what we have here already. I would like a couple dragons, but maybe that's asking too much. If I don't end up red, that's I mean, if, I'm not going to like force red for Sarkin. The card's not that good. Like, three mana for basically an enchantment that rummages is really not that great. Although this is an enchantment that rummages and can also win you the game at some point. Oh, that's a late Ravenous Harpy. That could set us up pretty nicely for... Red, black, and Harpy is just fine in most decks anyway. Another activated ability to keep in mind for for Runic Armasaur. Mostly taking Harpy because the next best card for what we've got so far is like Torment and Voice or Highland Game, and I don't particularly care for those, and Explosive Apparatus is very blah. Ravenous Harpy is good in the decks where Harpy is good, so if we end up in one of those decks like Red, Black, maybe we wheel the Brawl Bash Ogre, which isn't unreasonable. That pack was kind of weak, though, so... 
Probably not getting the Brawl Bash back. Ooh, Bogart Brute, huh? Well, this is where I don't like to be. Three cards of three different colors, but I'm going to pick up this Bogart Brute. There's not even a green card in the pack, and Mind Rot you can just get whenever, basically. I don't actually hate Mind Rot, but we'll see. Uh, not getting a very clear sign as to what the open color is, but Harpy into Bogart Brute makes me believe this color combination is something I want to go towards. But then there's also green, and there's also just not... Uh, another pack where there's not really a great pick. Probably going to be Greenwood Sentinel. I don't like Skilled Animator. I'm not going into a fourth color for it anyway. And then there's Rocks Oracle, which is extremely overrated, but not particularly great. I'll play one or two of these. I'll play a lot more if I have um, the cards that care about four power creatures, but rather just have a little curve filler. Ooh, this is a card I like. Abnormal Endurance is fantastic. Even just on creatures without Enter the Battlefield triggers, it's good. And then on creatures with Enter the Battlefield triggers, it's strong. <laughs> we have one elf. We'll go and pump it up, I guess. It's a late divination. I'm going to take Thud here. That gives us two sack outlets. Then we can start looking for things like Active Treason and maybe build that deck. Unfortunately, we are in the position where we have, you know, three cards of three different colors. So we've got to kind of figure out what our next colors are going to be. Recollect is a card you can play, but it's not really fantastic, and Sure Strike is better suited for aggro, so I'll just go ahead and pick up the, uh... Uh, actually, I might be short on playables, depending on how this goes. I'll actually pick up the Catalyst Elemental, and a Mind Rot. I don't mind a Mind Rot. Double Cast can work with some cards. It can work with Thud. You don't have to pay the cost when for the second copy of Double Cast, but you gotta be Thud in something really good to go Double Cast Thud. I actually want... Oh, yeah, I got the Mind Rot. Cool. I was going to say, I, I actually wanted the Mind Rot there, though. <laughs> Looks like Red Black is most likely. Brawl Bash Ogre did not come back around. But we came out of that pack with a removal spell. Ooh, Sarkin's Unsealing. Vine Mare. Foil Thud. Suspicious Bookcase. Wava Axe. Meandering River. Gearsmith Pro... Yeah, we're just going to name every card in the pack. So, if I take Sarkin's Unsealing here, do I have anything that actually triggers it yet? No, and that's bad, right? But then I can take, like, Two-Headed Zombies. I don't think I should pass up on Sarkin's Unsealing. I have a Thornhide Wolves if I end up red-green, but that doesn't seem likely. Kind of sucks that this is pack two pick one instead of pack um one pick one, because Sarkin's Unsealing is super broken in the right kind of deck. I could also just pick up like a Vine Mare here, get the red out of here, play black green or something like that. But Sarkins and Sealing has such high upside if I start drafting around it, which I'm not going to do with this pick, but I'm happy enough to pick up Dried Green Seeker. Man, if I end up full on three colors again, and it's always Jun too. This is exactly what I ended up with uh, <laughs> in the last um, draft, except I had two Palaka Worms. So, you know, there was that. Oh, man. Colossal Majesty as well. Pick up Rabbit Bite here. Looks like we're going to get a lot of green this pack. Dried Green Seeker, Rabbit Bite. Although the person who passed the Green Seeker opened a, um, or took their rare. So there's Colossal Majesty. I don't actually think I'm playing Sarkin's Unsealing. I just don't have the cards for it at the moment. Things could go in a way where I end up with the cards for it, but it seems unlikely. Here's a cool pick. Rise from the Grave, Colossal Dreadmall, possibly a red-green fixer, although I might get this back. Not a lot of other decks interested in splashing. Colossal Dreadmall's good. Um, let me go ahead and see. As far as, like, I have maybe, like, two black cards I'm super interested in and two red cards, so I'm still kind of back and forth. Rise from the Grave I like a lot better in decks that have tons of removal, and I really do like the first Colossal Dreadmaw, so I'm going to pick up Dreadmaw. It's just, you know, a good creature to have in your deck, a good finisher. It does the job, or gets the job done quite nicely. Don't really care much for Mind Rot. Ravenous Harpy doesn't look like it's going to be that good, so we're looking at basically two black cards I'm super excited about. And by super, I mean just <laughs> averagely excited about. And here, another Rabbit Bite. But if we look at green, we've got double Rabbit Bite now, and Dry Green Seeker, plus Rumic Armasaur, which can hold the fort down. Very hard to kill this card. We've got 
two high-end creatures, even though I don't think that's going to be enough for the um, Sarkins and Seelin. Although the flavor, oh, the flavor. Take another Colossal Dread Maul. That ups the count to three. Take, could take a Fire Elemental. All right, let's go ahead and get Black out of here and stop and consider Strangling Spores at some point. I don't mind splashing a removal spell if I get one or two fixers for it. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the side for now, though. Yeah, I'm going to pick up a Fire Elemental. It's really the only card that's even, like, on color. I don't love it, but that does bring our account to four. Ooh, Foul Orchard or Rejuvenator. Ooh, or Encyclopedia. Hmm. That's actually a tough pick. Encyclopedia is very good for a lot of matchups. And this gives this deck access to something that it otherwise might not have. Although Greenseeker plus Sarkin does give us some amount of like card filter and card draw, card advantage. I don't know about this stud either. But you could pick up a Rejuvenator too, which is pretty good when you have a bunch of fives and so on and so forth. Yeah, I'm just going to pick up Rejuvenator. Sorry, Encyclopedia. Uh, I'll pick up Apparatus here as a sideboard card potentially. I think with Double Rabbit Bite, I don't want to start Apparatus. Rail Tower, yeah, I'll grab a foil, I guess, for the, the collection. Ooh, I like having a plummet. And, hmm, Highland Game or Torment and Voice. I always like having Torment and Voice. Plus, we can just build an all Sarkin deck with every Sarkin card. Um, Highland Game's also kind of blah, so I'll pick up a Torment and Voice here. Um, so now we're looking at four ways to trigger Sarkins and Ceiling in pack three. If we can get, I think, at least two more or maybe even two and upgrade a Fire Elemental to something a little bit better, I'll be happy. So we're looking for four drops specifically just to fill out the curve. I will, of course, you know, take removal spells very highly here. Our deck is not amazing here, but we came out of the pack with Meteor. I mean, we're going into pack three with... Three solid cards, a really good build around if we can make it work. A kind of interesting pick here. Green Seeker, which is great. Thud, which can be used as removal, especially when you have big creatures. Thud is also good against people who are playing things like um, Dwindle and Luminous Bonds, since they slap it on your creature and suddenly you don't care about sacrificing it, right? Plus, we have Strangling Spores as a possibility in our sideboard if we feel like we need to splash another removal spell but i think we're solidly in red green Ooh, it always hurts to pass a gin of wishes but pass it we must there's also a lich's caress here which is very good obviously could take a manolith if i feel like i need ramp but when i'm in green and i have rejuvenators i just don't like manolith probably gonna pick up a sky scanner uh i guess i could pick up another rejuvenator here I have a 7-drop, two sixes, and 5s, and I might pick up more 5s here. Yeah, Rejuvenator's going to do the trick just fine. Um, Ooh, Gravedigger. Another Boggart Brute. Here's where I like Rock's Oracle is when I have this card, exactly what I was talking about in the first pack. Probably enough for me to take it, too. Next best card is, like, Gravedigger, and I'm not exactly interested in Splash and Black right now, unless I really feel like I need to. But I'm going to go ahead and snap up the Rock's Oracle. I guess I missed out on a Vine Mare in Pack 1, or Pack 2, but I picked up Sarkin's Unseal and App instead, right? We actually don't even have a lot of red cards. We have six red cards, a couple of which I'm not even, like, super excited about. Thud and Torment and Voice aren't great. I would like some Bristling Boars to fill out the 4-drop slot. Oh, Supreme Phantom, yes. Now all my other spirits are going to get plus one, plus one. Why is this? Why? <sighs> Just... All right, I'm taking Inferno Helion, though. Let's go. This is like the card you're looking for when you have Sarkin's Unsealing. Not only is it just a card I think is good. There was a card in Cons of Tarkir. It was um three mana, four, four, and you sacrificed it if it ever attacked or blocked. And that didn't even have Trample. And then you get this, like, 7-3 Trampler with essentially the same ability. But, oh my god, let's... Oh, oh my god. Let's live the dream. We have double Inferno Helion now. Let's go. 
Uh, I wish I had the Colossal Majesty, but I don't. Gift of Paradise, huh? That's a pretty good one. What's our count at? One, two, three, four, five, six ways to trigger Sarkins and Sealand. That's the bare minimum, right? I think Omniscience is like half a ticket or, you know, 0.8 of a ticket, but not quite enough for me to take it. Plus, I think Sarkins and Sealand is going to pay for this draft. I might be wrong about that, but I think this is a pretty high ticket item at the moment. Uh, Gift of Paradise is definitely my pick here. It's a little redundant with the Rejuvenators, but three ways to ramp is not necessarily bad. Lightning Mare kind of sucks. Rocks Oracle probably won't wheel since it's the only other green card in the pack, but if it does, I'll happily play it. Ooh, Bristly Boar. Get in the deck, exactly what I'm looking for, and really the only card in this pack I can even play. Oh, the Gigantosaurus. Oh. Boom. Get in the deck. There's also the Cinder Barons. If we uh feel like we want the Strangling Spores. And there's also a Sky Scanner, which is really tough for me to pick, but get in the deck. G oh my god, Gigantosaurus triggers Sarkin's Unsealing. I feel like I've drafted this deck a thousand times on camera. Every time I record, I end up in this deck. Double cast with Thud. Worth mentioning that Thud is really good with Inferno Helion. Um, I'm just straight up not playing anything out of this pack. And we're back to the pack I opened. Departed Deckhand is my boy. If you uh watch my standard videos at all, which I'll have another one up. For the mono blue Throne of the God Pharaoh deck. Just, ugh. I can't play anything else out of this pack. Might as well take the Hostile Minotaur. Um, Manolith? I really don't see myself playing Manolith. I mean, Manolith is just worse than Gift of Paradise and Elvish Rejuvenator in a two-color deck, I think. Unless, for some reason, you have Artifact Synergies. But yeah, Thud is great with Inferno Helion, because this waits until the end of the turn to shuffle back. You can Thud it at your opponent. A lot of times they won't block Inferno Helion, because it's going to kill itself. So you deal 7, and then you dome them for 7. I guess if you have a double cast, you can like <laughs> just kill them on the spot. Because your Thud will deal 14 or something like that. We don't actually have any dragons at all in our deck, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um... Explosive apparatus or smell? I have a naturalize in my sideboard. I straight up don't need smell unless I care about it being foil, which never mind. The infectious horror is foil. <laughs> so eh, I'll just pick up apparatus. I can't see one in smell here. I really can't see one in field creeper, but you never know. I don't have any Highland games, so if I feel like I need to board into more two drops, then field creeper will do the job. Lava axe. Gigantosaurus seems castable in our deck, especially with Gift of Paradise. Oh, Bog Stomper. No, thank you. I don't think I've ever played a Bog Stomper. Ooh, double cast into double cast? Wow, amazing. Then your next spell gets copied a second time? I don't know. Wow, 23 playables too. Not a lot as far as sideboarding goes, but... I love when you play a green deck and you come out of it with a plummet and a naturalize. It just gives you your best two sideboard options against a lot of decks. Wall of Vines isn't... Can we just take a moment during deck building to tell you never play Wall of Vines. Just don't ever board into this. Don't play it. Don't even pick it. Like, if it's the last card in the pack, don't pick it. Just don't do it. Root Snare, I don't think I've ever played. Catalyst Elemental, is that something I want in my deck? It's like... A one-time gift of paradise that doesn't gain me three life and blocks? I, I don't know. Doesn't seem very good. Fire Elemental I wish was something different, but Fire Elemental's not even bad. Um, it pushes through the four toughness creatures pretty nicely. Things like Giant Spider. I mean, so do my other creatures, but, you know, Rock's Oracle trades for it. I think Fire Elemental is worse than Thornhide Wolves. I would rather have a point of toughness than a point of power, but gets the job done. We ended up one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9? Is that right? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 ways to trigger Sarkin's Unsealing. So this card will be broken in our deck if we can cast it and follow up with spells. Excuse me, we don't have a great early game. We also don't have a lot of removal. We have Meteor Golem and two Rabbit Bites, plus Thud if we really needed to be removal. Sarkin isn't even fantastic in our deck, but 
it'll do the job. And I like having a torment and voice in case you flush out, uh, flood out, but it looks like we have a lot to do with our mana. So this is exactly what we're going to play here. And we'll be a 9-8 mana base, 9 green. Uh, I guess I could go 10-7. I have a couple double red cards, though. I'm just going to go 9-8. It's a little awkward with the Gigantosaurus, but what, am I not going to play Gigantosaurus in my mono green deck? Not that I'm mono green, but I guess my green deck, I should say. All right, let's play another Sarkin's Unsealing deck, because apparently that's all I can draft. Um, thanks for watching. My name's Timothy. As always, we're going to get into the matches here, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. All right, we're here for match one. Um, this might actually be a Mulgan. Against a fast deck, having two five drops isn't great. Can't even cast these five drops with what we have. Um, Rabid Bite is a dead card unless we draw an early game creature. Yeah, I think I have to Mulligan this. <laughs> sure, six mana sources. I'm going to keep that on top. It's a turn for uh, Thornhide Wolves. We'll see what we're up against here, but Rejuvenator is fine if nothing else. Obviously, I'd rather be on the play with Rejuvenator than on a draw. But maybe my opponent plays like a Child of Night, and then Rejuvenator's like decent or something. But we'll we'll see. We'll see. As long as I'm not under like oomps amount of pressure, then I'm I'm fine with how this is going. Uh, opponent is stopped on my end step for some reason. Brandon, 83, come on. The other 82 of Brandon's didn't stop on my end step. Guess it's time to admire the art on some of these lands. Ooh, giant magical pine cones. Oh, oh, come on now, come on now, Brandon, come on now. All right, we might be in pause mode here. <laughs> yeah, oh, we'll be right back when Brandon decides what he's doing. Never mind, Brandon figured it out. Maybe. Sovereign's Bite. Oh, God, what is happening? You know, um, I feel like there's a deck in this format where you just draft all the Sovereign's Bites and all the Lava Axes, and you can probably get there. Just because nobody ever takes Sovereign Bites, so you can wheel all of these. You usually end up with, like, three or four in your deck. People don't really prioritize Lava Axe, so you can get, like, three or four Lava Axes. And then you fill out the rest of the deck with, like, Viashino uh, Pyromancers and just any way to deal direct damage to your opponent. Um, I'm actually going to get Forests here in case I draw... Which I'm gonna call it? Gigantosaurus. I can actually cast it in two turns. But um, yeah. I, I <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I could have just played nothing but forests up to this point, and then I could cast Gigantosaurus this turn, which I didn't think about. But I mean, we're gonna win against an opponent on two lands playing Sovereign's Bite, so I don't think it's gonna matter too much, unless Brandon's like punking us, playing a bad card, and just like. I'm letting my guard down, and then out of nowhere, they, like, triple Lich's Caress, our two creatures. <clears throat> you, know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Ooh, black-white. Okay, so, I mean, they could just be a life gain deck, too, and be short on ways to gain life. Plague Mare. Good card to know about. Uh, can't be blocked by white creatures. <laughs> I think... In the sake of, for the sake of mana efficiency, I'm just going to play Clawful Dread Maw. That way next turn I can go like Gigantosaurus plus, you know, Torment and Voice if I draw it. I think I'm fairly far ahead here that I don't need to, you know, be cute and play the bigger creature. Maybe I should. You know, they're hitting their mana now. Maybe Sovereign's Bite doesn't mean they're playing a bad deck. Maybe it's just there for the life gain synergy, like I said. You know, you would happily play, like, Revitalize over Sovereign's Bite, I think. But it might go, like, kill your creature, kill your creature, and then suddenly I don't have anything. Or not. Runic Armasaur. Well, one mana off from being able to cast both of these. I guess two green sources, though. 
Anyway, coming in for a bunch and playing a Gigantosaurus. I guess the one card I'm really scared of is Cleansing Nova. Let's see if they have a trick here. They could Strangling Sports Thornhide Wolves. That's exactly what's happening. All right. Never mind. Opponent's de opponent has good cards. They just have a bad card in their deck. All right. Here comes a 10 10. Strangling Spore is that one. Right, they could just untap Go Witch's Caress or something like that. They've drawn nothing but mana off the top of their deck. Three lands in a row. That or they accidentally skip their second turn. No, because they cast Sovereign's Bite. Daybreak Chaplain. Okay. But if they pass the turn without using like a Luminous Bonds or a Lich's Caress. Ugh. Ugh. I'm going to play that. Play both of my cards this turn. Ha ha ha. Da-um. I believe you mean da-um. Alright, 16 damage coming in. Gigantosaurus does not have Trample. But each tooth is the length of a horse and new ones grow in every 16 days. In case you care. Uh, they have to go for the triple block on Colossal Dreadmaw. I get to take out two of their creatures. They do get to eat my Dreadmaw. Gain a life and take ten, so they'll be at three. I kind of want to get the Life Linker out of here. And then get rid of the three, two. And then they can keep Plague Mare, I suppose. Not worried about a two, two on board. Less life they can gain, the better in their black-white deck. Let's go and go um, Sarkins and... Oh, I should not play that land. Whoops. That land's pretty good if I draw Sarkin or um, Torment in Voice. Here's another green rare. <laughs> we just played mono rares here. This isn't great. Um, one card that black-white plays that this is very good against is Vampire Neonate. Ooh, it's Wrath the Awakener. I misjudged you, opponent. This is super sweet here. If I draw a four power creature, actually, they're at three, so, you know, Sarkin's and Seal and kills them. Oh, maximum punishment, too. Let's see. If I attack with both, they're kind of priced into blocking Gigantosaurus with Isareth. What can Isareth get back right now? Basically, nothing, and they can't really attack with this. I think playing Sarkin and just, you know, waiting until I draw. A big creature is enough here. I have, what, six? I have five left in my deck that I can draw. If I had left that land in my hand and not been an idiot, then I could draw into another card here, but it's fine. I'm not gonna... <laughs> oh, right. I have four rares on board. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But the flavor! Also, I'm playing Dino Tribal. <laughs> we have Dino Tri Dino Sarkin Tribal. That's, that's, there we go. The name of the video, Dino Sarkin Tribal. Ooh, Regal Bloodlord. Man, opponent actually has a great deck. I misjudged you, opponent. But no way to gain life. They cannot attack with this Isareth. Forest. Alright. We will discard. Uh, yes. Bristly Boar. Well, that'll do it. And that'll just go upstairs. This is cast trigger. Oh, it's not ETB. I don't get to trigger it four times. All right, that was pretty sweet. Opponent has actually a really good set of cards there. But just <laughs> alms of the... Or, um, Sovereigns by whatever it's called. Um, explosive apparatus. Uh, Plummet's good against Regal Bloodlord, but that's all we saw. Black White usually has flyers. Naturalize, we didn't see any targets for. We did see a Plague Mare, which makes our one toughness creatures worse, but I think Rejuvenators are the only one. I'm not too worried about getting two for one off Rejuvenators. So, um,. I could see bringing in, like, a plummet here. But I don't think we need to do that. I think we have answers for Regal Bloodlord. We saw a Strangling Spores from the opponent and a Plague Mirror. They probably have other removal spells. Ooh. Anytime you get to play turn two, Green Seekers. Nice. Plus Sarkin's Unseal, and hopefully we find some hits. 
This has the potential to be a very busted hand if the opponent doesn't interact or get too fast of a start. Rejuvenator on three is quite nice. Again, maybe I should just play out a bunch of forests here in case I draw a Gigantosaurus and play it as soon as possible. Marauder's Axe. Ooh, not too worried about that. Alright, so now we've got Green Seeker going. We play Rejuvenator, Darkens Unsealing, and hopefully find a hit before then. Alright, Bloodletter into Marauder's Axe. Gonna put me down to 15 next turn. <laughs> rejuvenator into Rejuvenator, eh? Worth noting how many big creatures we're putting on the bottom. Three to the bottom. Yeah, just gonna go and get Forests here. Yeah, three of our big hits to the bottom is not great. They just equip. I find a way to kill this, and they don't have too many other flyers. Yeah, get in the damage, I suppose. If I can kill this, I don't feel too bad about what's happening. It's pretty good, though. All right, let's go and just do this now. Sweet. All right. 1 and 0 on the green seeker. Seek that green. Plus, ooh, graveyard marshal. Uh oh. Drawing a bunch more lands isn't great. I guess we have meteor golem though, which is going to pop this. We're going to probably take a big hit here. I can play another rejuvenator though, or I can get Sarkins and Sealing down if I feel like I'm destined to draw something here. I could. Thud doesn't actually do anything. I think my goal is to play Rejuvenator into Meteor Golem. Then I have a potential double block on Graveyard Marshal. Uh, no big creatures to the bottom that time. It's probably a turn where I can go like Sarkins and Sealing into a 4-drop. I think Bristlin' Boar went to the bottom though, so that's not very likely. We could be in trouble here. We're getting hit for a lot. We're a little bit slow. We are going to play a Meteor Golem next turn, which is probably popping the flyer, but if they play another flyer, then we're in a little bit of trouble. Sovereign's Bite. Well, I don't actually care that my opponent played that. We are down to 8. Plus, I can Thud Meteor Golem without feeling too bad about it. So that can take out a potential another creature. Let's not forget to use our Green Seeker. Alright, ooh, we're drawing Dreadmall though. So, I still think I'm just going to play Meteor Golem and get the immediate threat out of here. My opponent can make a zombie, but whatever. Just pop this. Next turn, go like maybe Sarkin's Unsealing plus Thud. The opponent's down to two cards. Their, their deck seems really sweet, but this just isn't really doing that much. I guess it's just for a Regal Bloodlord, but sure. I would rather them make a zombie with this than untap and play like Macabre Wallets or Grave Digger and get back um, Sky March Bloodletter. Bloodletter is a very good common sweet card. I've had, you know, Ixalan decks where I just draft like four of these. Alright, here comes the zombie. Block with double rejuvenator, I think. Go shaboom, shaboom. I do not care about these rejuvenators at all. Go ahead and just activate this now. Huh, Bristlin Boar. So yeah, we can go Sarkins and Thielen into Bristlin Boar. Thought that went to the bottom though. Maybe, maybe I miss all it. Boom. All right. Well, opponent is super dead now, I think, because we're going to play Sarkins and Sealin, and then I guess it, they could have invoked the Divine, but the fact that we have Colossal Dreadmall in hand plus Thud means we have so much damage on them. We just get to take out their creatures basically for free, or at least their next few creatures. Well, add in big creatures to the board. Thud I don't actually love, but I would wish it was just another creature. 
But I think we're playing all of our creatures that trigger Sarkins and Seelan. We have Dry Green Seeker going to try and help us hit gas. In fact, I might stop on my upkeep and start activating that. Just so I can phase through lands. Another Sovereign's Bite. Well, that's one way to lose this game. Is to get bitten. So we gotta close this out before the opponent, like, Lava axes us, or Marauders axes us. Oh, I was supposed to activate that on upkeep. I didn't even activate it on their end step. Um, I think Thud saves me from another Flyer, because that's one way to lose this game. So I think I can probably play Colossal Dreadmall, or maybe I just play Boggart Brute. I'm dealing 7. Oh, they have a Hired Blade. I'm fine with that trading for Bristle and Boar, I think. Keep in mind that Sarkin's Unfeelin goes upstairs too, so playing Colossal Dreadmaw here deals four to him. Alright, let's remember to use Dried Green Seeker this turn. Opponent seems like they have a sweet deck with a lot of stinkers, unfortunately. Gift of Paradise. I actually don't mind drawing that. Three life seems like it could matter in this match. They're going to gain some life there. Hmm. I could actually just thud that off. I shall offer you the trade for my Meteor Golem. If not, you take 9, but you can gain 4 on the swing back. Oh, they did block, so they're at 15. Not playing around Cleanse and Nova. I haven't seen any reason to think my opponent has it. Bogart Brute's actually really good on this board. Back to you, Tom. I mean, Brandon. We're very, very far ahead, but... <clears throat> Doesn't take too much to swing it. Isreth is nice. We might actually thud that if we have to. If we don't draw like a rabid bite or something. <laughs> oh my god. We're gonna start concealing with Gigantosaurus. And then, oh, and then we get to thud them with Gigantosaurus. Somebody please call a doctor because we're about to break this kid's ankles. No offense, Brandon. You seem like an alright person, but shaboom, take that. <laughs> oh my god. Blows up Isareth, deals four to them, and we have Thud on the Gigantosaurus. Yeah, there's the concession. I would have conceded to that. I'm like, I'm done. No way. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, our Dino Tribal deck got there. We have, what, three Dinos in our deck? Four? <laughs> All right, um, let's see if we can repeat the success in our other round. See you in match two. Eric, Eric B is president. I assume. Um, the sand is so close to being good. If one of these mountains was a forest, that'd be great, but Gigantosaurus is basically already a mulligan in this hand. Meteor Golem is close to a mulligan with this hand, and Sarkin's Unsealing's not looking too great. I think on the draw, I'm supposed to mull this. It's close. Ooh, this hand... Eh, I guess with, um, with the scry and being on the draw, I'll keep this. Sarkin? I don't really want Sarkin here. Sarkin's more of like if things come to a a board stall or something, then it's a playable card for me. Do need to draw land within the first three turns of this game for this hand to work out, but if it does, you know, I have a bunch of ramp, I have some life gain, some roadblocks for the opponent. Uh oh. That's not good for us though. Guess I can take my upkeep stop off. Also, if I just straight up don't draw a third land, it won't matter because I can't cast my spell, so. Opponent's going to 4-drop us here, maybe? Ooh, Rejuvenator. Yeah, opponent's going to get really far ahead of us if we don't draw our lands, like, in quick succession. So, we might be in trouble. And there's Splash and Black, also playing a Jun deck. Alright, well, we get to play Magic, which is nice. Go ahead and uh, throw out a Rejuvenator. Getting a Mountain, putting a Gigantosaurus on the bottom. Good, I don't want to draw Gigantosaurus or Torment and Voice right now. Comes some big stuff. Alright, we got the turn 
5, Colossal Dreadmaw. Turn 4, Colossal Dreadmaw. Meteor Golem is a nice answer to that. Let me see. I can go 1, 2, 3. I can't play more than one thing this turn, right? Meteor Golem is going to have to be my answer to Colossal Dreadmaw. It's not coming for two turns. Plus, I've got to hope my opponent doesn't have too many other big fatties, which they probably do. Very good start from the opponent. Um, what else can I do here? I can only play one of these spells. I think it doesn't matter too much which one I play. guess having the body on board can't hurt. Uh, Inferno Helion and Sarkin's Unfeeling to the bottom. Yeah, this is too slow against my opponent's ramp. If they play another big creature here, I feel like I'm in trouble. Although, I guess Inferno Helion and Colossal Dreadmaw can trade off for things, so we'll see. <clears throat> I still can't play Meteor Golem next turn, but if I draw a land, I can just play a Colossal Dreadmaw. I gotta watch out for things like Rabid Bite from the opponent, but they just like go two more big creatures, then I fall behind very quickly this game. Um, can I go Gift? If I draw a land, I can go Gift into Inferno Helion, which I might do. I could also just play Thornhide Wolves and try to, like, triple block. That never really goes well. Alright, probably no 6-drop this turn, which is something, I suppose. Tapping out, Siegebreaker Giant. Uh, opponent's wrecking us. <laughs> We've drawn a little bit too much on the ramp side, not a lot on the payoff side. We're just super dead. They have 12 power and trample. I think this match is done. We, we needed to hit a land there to even put something on board. And then it says target creature can't block. Can they just kill us this turn? 12, 13, 14. Poison tip archer. Yeah. All right. This game is over. Unfortunately. It's a little bit too slow. Not, I mean, we had a fine draw, too. It's just opponent ramped out way too big. Uh, Going to keep the deck exactly the same here and hope that we're a little bit better off on the play. Druid of the Cow is something this deck would love that we're missing. It helps with Gigantosaurus, and it just helps with our late game stuff in general, but is what it is. Sarkin is not very good, especially not good in this matchup where you're often just going to have to trade resources and hope that your big creature sticks. But opponent, opponent's deck seems basically like... Well, we're basically playing the mirror match here. Not just colors, but like our deck is just big creature dot deck. We had a good draw there. Against a slower deck, like against our first round opponent, that probably would have been fine. We could have just played like Thornhide Wolves or something, but a turn 4 Colossal Dreadmaw, you don't have an answer for it, you're basically dead. Strangling Spores would be nice against some of the... Early game ramp creatures, Dread of the Cow, especially. Opponent is extensively sideboarded against our Elvish Rejuvenators, I suppose. Plus, they have black in their deck. We didn't even get to see what it's for. Either for removal spells or something like the Victus Asmati. Poison Tip Archer is also really good. So, yeah, they've got some good ones floating around. All right, let's get a keepable hand, please. This is not keepable. Not even close, so we'll go ahead and pitch that. Ugh, another really slow hand. Think I've got to keep. Hope I hit, like, some rejuvenators. I'll keep that on top. That could help hit some action. If our opponent just plays the same exact way they played last game, then we're not going to win with this hand. I guess if we had a rejuvenator on turn three, then being on the play means we can play these out. But it really depends on how the opponent's draw goes here. Um, let's go ahead and torment and voice away a forest. Thud Gigantosaurus. Uh-oh. Now we have straight up nothing. I guess this is one of the downsides of playing this deck. Yep, opponent just has what they need. This is pretty good. I guess this doesn't trigger off mana abilities, though, so it's not going to trigger off Druid of the Cow. It's unfortunate. Now we're with a bunch of five drops in our hand, and we pitched a land. <laughs> Probably should have pitched, like, Rock's Oracle. All right, Centaur Courser is fine and all. All right, well, we draw another land. I'm feeling okay. Hopefully they don't just put an Aura on this. I'm going to block it. They could Rabbit Bite it off or something, but... All right, this isn't exactly the type of draw I'm worried about. 
land. Yes. All right, let's go. I guess Thornhide Wolves blocks best here. Rock Oracle digs me into more action, but I would like to just hold off what they're doing for now and then, you know, use my draw card later on. Sky Scanner's fine. Thud might actually be decent here too. Probably not, but could be. Gonna go ahead and play Rocks Oracle. Draw a card. If it's a forest, I'll play the forest instead of the mountain. Ooh. That could be good. Actually, that could be amazing if we draw two more green sources. Plus, if we just naturally draw any of our Colossal Dreadmaws, it's gonna be pretty good. Opponent's on five cards. They haven't played any huge dominant creatures yet. Yep, Sky Scanner can get in there. All right, Mountain, not quite the land I want. Also, they just passed with seven mana and didn't do anything. I feel like I should attack with Rock's Oracle and offer him a trade. They probably block with a Centaur Courser. Rock's Oracle's not doing too much as it is. I still have my blockers back. I'd be happy trading this off for a 3-3. I got my value off my 4-2. Maybe I should keep it around in case they play a big creature and I need to, like, um, gang block it. Then having the 4-2 is fine. Also, maybe if I need to use Thud, that's fine. Unfortunately, Gigantosaurus is not quite what we want. We want to draw Inferno Helions. Even just Colossal Dreadmalls are fine. Here comes a Gaspark Twins or 8 mana. Oh, a big Hunger in Hydra. Well, that's pretty good. If I can cast Gigantosaurus, I don't care too much about it. Pretty good against Sarkins and Sealand too, since it gets counters whenever it's dealt damage. Yeah, this isn't going great for us. Alright, one forest away. Can't actually kill this. I'm just going to get poked to death by it. We'll see. We shall see. I'm gonna let the first hit through. Rejuvenator, sure. Hmm. Alright, let's let the first hit through. Take an eight. Really need a forest off the top here to wipe the rest of their board, and then maybe I can like jump and go like attack plus thud you or something. Ooh, they have a green seeker of their own. Forest. Elvish Rejuvenator. Not quite. Guess that's a chumper. Forest, forest, sweet. So now we're in trouble mode. Um, I do have Runic Armasaur, which does work against Dried Green Seeker. But this worries me. Alright, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and chump Hunger and Hydra here. In case they have like Titanic Growth or something like that. It's going to get a little bit bigger, but that's fine. We are going to play Gigantosaurus and wipe all of their board, except they'll have an 11-11 or a 12-12 Hydra on board. Oh, and they're going to have whatever this is too. No, that's not what I wanted to see. Man, my opponent's deck is sick. Frog Art Brute. Alright. Let's go ahead and wipe most of their board. See if they want to activate that. They did not. That thing gets bigger. You can't gang block it either, which super sucks. Well, it has how much damage on it? Four? I could fling... Or, I could play Bogart Brew and thud this. Send Gigantosaurus at Hunger and Hydra? They have two cards left in hand. I can't kill this otherwise. The... the This is close. Uh, so right now I'm going like chump and try to get in there with Gigantosaurus enough times that I can thud them out of the game. 
Maybe if I draw like an Inferno Helion, then I can do it. It's just, I'm missing my opportunity to do something here. <sighs> Fine, I'm going to go ahead and play Boggart Brute and pass. It's my three creatures versus Polaka Worm and Sarkin's Unsealing. If uh, I don't thud this now. All right, I'm going to try to win with the uh, Gigantosaurus plus thud here. I could kill this Hydra, which might be a mistake. Especially since I'm forced into blocking it every turn. Oh, I guess I could draw Meteor Golem. That might have gone to the bottom of my library. Oh, wow. Attack with Polaka Worm too? Hmm. That means Rabbit Bite or Gigantic Growth? Um, I guess if they have a pump, I'm dead to it, so I might as well play around it. Oh, this has Trample as well. That can't be good. 10, 11, 12. Leave ourselves the best avenue to win next turn. Double Chumps. Hopefully they add, like, one creature to the board, and then I can kill it with, like, Sarkin's Unsealing or something. Oh, what if they have a Thud of their own? No, no, another big boy is not what I wanted to see. Okay. Um, so if I go Rabid Bite, kill your Colossal Dreadmall, and they have nothing, I attack them for 13, and then I Thud Gigantosaurus, and that wins. If they have nothing. Um, Titanic Growth doesn't even get them out of that. They could have a removal spell for Boggart Brute. But this is my only out. So we're going to go for it. Dino Fight. Dino Bite. Alright, back for 13. <laughs> and then Thud You. Uh, choose any target, pay red, sack Gigantosaurus, and get there? That would be sweet. And here comes the chat message. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Eric B. as president. I'll vote for you next time in the caucuses. Alright, opponent's deck is better than our deck. <laughs> They have a lot of big things. They're on the play this time. This is a matchup where I'd actually like a mind rot against a deck with a lot of late game targets. You let them use up all their early game stuff and then you get them. Ooh. This hand is probably too slow. I have Sarkins unsealing into something. I don't think I'm supposed to mull though. Yeah, th this was a mulgan. I don't know why I kept that. It just has no early game. My opponent's already shown that they can ramp pretty hard. Like, I might not even be able to play Sargon's Unsealing on turn four. No Druid, no Druid. <sighs> Jeez, come on, man. You can't always have it. They probably have multiples, though. My opponent's deck seems absurd. No, this is another turn four Colossal Dreadmall. And I'm not even going to have anything on the board. Yeah, this was supposed to be a mulligan. Yeah, I can't beat a turn 4 Colossal Dreadmaw, I don't think. Oh, I'm supposed to be playing out Forest, too. Maybe they'll have the All Centaur uh, Corsair Hand or something like that. Yeah, I messed up by not playing out Forests. I guess I need to play a Mountain at some point. They're going to play a 5-drop, though, so no attack with the Druid. Oh, oh, this is the type of hand that Sarkin's Unsealing is good against. We're going to take a huge hit up till then, though. They could play a 7-drop this turn. Oh, I guess if they had Colossal Dreadmaw in hand, they couldn't have played it. They didn't have the 5th land. Now they have 6 mana. Alright, Britzlin Boar. I really need to cast this Gigantosaurus this game. One more forest off the top. Ooh, Marauder's Axe. That I wasn't expecting. I'm only taking 4 too. I get to play Bristlin' Boar, shoot down their Bristlin' Boar. Um, I 
Yeah, let's go ahead and just knock their bristling boar down. And then forest off the top wipes their board completely. And getting these druids off board would be really nice so it strands their six drops in their hand, which they probably have. Although they can play something this turn. Yeah, I kind of expected that. I'm going to go ahead and just trade off for Centaur Courser. I want to preserve my life total. I can play Bogart Brute next turn. Going down to 12. Forest off the top is what I want. Yes, yes, get them. Boom! Your ankles, kid. I'm so sorry. And it deals four to them. <laughs> This is just not even fair. I have Meteor Golem to follow up with. So now I think we're uh, we're winning this game. Spark Tongue. Yeah, I'm just going to attack and thud again. I mean, they can chump walk. Nope. All right. <laughs> well, we stole a game we had no business uh, winning. Thank you, Eric B. as president. Wow. The Gigantosaurus. Yeah, my opponent's deck is better than mine by far. They have... Their, their deck is sick. I also can't read the... Whatchamacallit? Select twirly button to... I, I wish... Somebody tell me how to get rid of that. <laughs> Alright, let's uh let's go ahead and take the finals with this deck. Hey, if we can beat the much better mirror match, then I'm happy with it. I think my opponent probably just didn't have a lot of removal. We got lucky that game, though. Like, very lucky. Not only did we hit that fifth forest off the top for the Gigantosaurus, but um, we were lucky with their start, their double druid hand, that they didn't have their big creatures. But anytime you get to go Sarkins on Seal and on the second mode, it feels like you just, like, got away with murder. Um, I like this hand. I'm on the draw against everyone must win. Seems uh, kind of tough to do against another green deck. See, they have the turn two Druid of the Cow. The only thing I think from a green deck that's scarier than turn two Druid of the Cow is turn two Dried Green Seeker. That card is absurd. I would love to draw Sarkins and Seal in having the Inferno Helion, but... We'll, we'll see what happens. Opponents deciding uh, if they want to do something before combat. Clearly, I plan on swinging out on them. And uh, they want to go ahead and use their one mana green spell to stop me from doing that. Their magical pinecone land. Alright, everyone must win. Let's, uh, no, nobody's going to win if uh, we don't keep things rolling. No turn to dryad, druid. Man... I don't even know if I... I think I saw one of these in our draft very early on. Oh, well, we got all the ramp we can ask for. No, oh, against the mirror match again. See if we're up against another sick deck. This is good. I like them not curving out a four drop a turn early. Oh, against kind of the same deck, too. This time we don't have Sarkins and Seal to just mop things up, though, so... We're going to go ahead and ramp a little bit, hopefully, get some forests. Uh, Inferno Helion rocks Oracle to the bottom. And we'll probably play Bristlin' Boar next turn. Might just play another Rejuvenator so we can go like Boar plus Rabid Bite in the same turn. Opponent's planning on using the mana from Druid, hence no attack into, oh, Druid of Horns. That could be bad. Probably not something to worry about yet. Um, Gonna go and just play Bristlin' Boar. Probably trade it off for, whatchamacallit. This means they're probably like the Blanchwood Armor version of this deck. They probably have Oaken Forms or something like that. So this is really appealing to try and get rid of right away, but I can't always go like Inferno Helion into Rabid Bite. If they stick an R on this, they'll just, you know, get the 3 3 out of it. I think worst case scenario, they go like double Talons of Wildwood and get a bunch of 3 3s, <laughs> which might happen here. But, I mean, it's pretty good. Plus Lightning Strike? Wow. 
I am under pressure. I'm taking seven down to nine. I'm not going to chump yet. Sarkin's a two one? No. Can't be so lucky. So here we're going to go Inferno Helion into Rabid Bite. And then probably just trade Inferno Helion for this. And then we're still in a little bit of trouble. Uh, this isn't when it deals damage, right? It's when it attacks or bought. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. You know, Palladium Ores, the one that's only hex proof until it deals damage. Hmm. Do I just want to trade here or do I want to try and thud? Nah, I think I'm supposed to just trade while I can. We're in trouble this game, though. <laughs> Demanding Dragon. All right. Um, right. I'll sack this. Green Seeker. All right, we're actually just dead on board. Yeah. Oh, I guess we're not. We can go block, block. Take five down to one. But uh, it's not looking good. Demand and Dragon is an absurd card. Bunch of good stuff to the bottom. Play that just in case. Hmm. I, we were probably going to lose this game regardless. Demand and Dragon is absurd. Uh, probably enough to bring in a plummet. Talons. Back to hand and then replay it on Demand and Dragon. Sure. You got me. Don't want Plummet just for that. Plummet's such a dead card if they don't draw something. They could have like a Spark Tongue Dragon, but Plummet might just be better than like, you know, Sarkin in this matchup or something like that. Um, didn't see any naturalized targets. Ra I mean, I'm not going to naturalize, whatchamacallit. Um, Talons of Wildwood. Thud. Probably just okay. Did steal the last game, though. Could just cut Sarkin here for Plummet. Sarkin's very slow against these red-green decks. Again, you usually trade resources. I think I like Sarkin against, um, like, a blue-black control deck or something like that. But not really in love with it against the mirror match where opponent's going to be playing big creatures. Plus the opponent, you know, if all of my green-red opponents are going to draw their Druid of the Cows every time on turn two, then... You know, they're going to be pretty far ahead of us. Ooh, this hand is sketch. We have not had good openers, that's for sure. We want some of our two drops or three drops. We don't have many. I know we've got a lot of late game. Double Colossal Dreadmall. The only thing we can cast right now is Bogart Brew, and we have a bunch of mountains. I'm going to mold this. This is much better. Um, they have, Did they show us Lightning Strike? I think they showed us Lightning Strike, so... Hopefully they can't kill our Green Seeker, but this is a fantastic open in hand. It just needs to draw into the action rather than having all the action in the open in hand. Opponent deciding on their mulligan. I just think three red sources, double Colossal Dread Maul against a red-green ramp deck is not where you want to be unless you also have your ramp, which we didn't have. And there's no guarantee we even cast anything other than Bogart Brute, which is probably just trading for a creature. Uh, I'll keep, and I think with what I have here, I'm fine shipping that to the bottom. Good chance we just draw land as it is, and we have Green Seeker plus Rejuvenator. You know, Rejuvenators are almost always going to be accountable for two more lands. Playing against two red-green decks in a row with a red-green deck is probably a good sign, right? That you drafted good colors? Maybe. Alright. Ooh, Thornhide Wolves is nice. Um, gonna play out my forests for now. Play the mountain when I have a reason to play a mountain. The only way that really punishes me is uh, if I draw... Um, oh boy, Dark Dweller Oracle? I do like this card. Uh, Fire Elemental. It's my only double red card now that I took Sarkin out. Yeah, this card's cool. It's not really poised to be good in my opponent's deck, but it gets the job done. We'll go and play Rejuvenator, and that sets us up for Thornhide Wolves next turn. Again, paying attention to what's going to the bottom here in our deck. It is relevant. Uh, Yeah, I'm just going to keep up Green Seeker and possibly double block this if it attacks. Eyes are unnecessary for seeing the future. 
opponent's a little bit on the slow side as far as their actions go, but maybe they have a bad internet connection. So we're sending Runic Armasaur to the bottom, which does work against this. A removal spell and an Inferno Helion. Okay, fine with that. We can cast... Well, actually, we're one green away from casting a Gigantosaurus, which red-green has almost no ways to deal with a 10-10. And I would rather see this from my opponent than... Uh, Druid of the Cow or their own dry green seeker. Daggerback Basilisk. That could mean bad news if they have declared dominance in their deck. If they can't attack. I get to start activating green seeker, hopefully. Just filtering some lands. Oh, please attack. I will double block in a heartbeat. Alright, let's for not forget to use this ability. Bristly Boar. Alright, we will draw a Bristly Boar. And we're going to play a Thornhide Wolves this turn. Not exactly great against Daggerback Basilisk, but it gets the job done. Yeah, opponent's definitely on the slow side here, but it's, it's fine. Can't really attack either. If Daggerback attacks, not blocking, I don't think. I would love to get this off board before they have the chance to play, like, Declare Dominance. Since I'm probably going to play out more creatures. Alright, Rejuvenator of your own. Dark Dweller Oracles is nice with Rejuvenator. It gives you something to sacrifice. I would attack with this if I were them. Maybe not if you want to hold back for the Thornhide Wolves. Hum, 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 hum. All right, what's what's it gonna what's it gonna be? Uh, everyone must win. And you're not casting anything for one green. Let me resolve my spell or my ability, please. Rocks Oracle, not the worst draw. Probably just gonna play it here. Um, if I attack, trade off. That's probably fine. That trade's gonna happen no matter what. Um, I guess right now the one card I'm worried from my opponent is Demanding Dragon, since I don't really have an answer for it at the moment. I don't think sitting back on defense is right. I think I should just clear some resources, play... I have more big creatures to play here. I have Green Seeker going, even though it hasn't drawn me a card yet. Play Rock's Oracle this turn. Alright, uh, get in there, trade off for Daggerback Basilisk. Boom. Alright, we'll go ahead and play the Rocks Oracle. Yeah. Uh, play that out. And ship it back to you, my friend. No demanding dragon, please. Or, I guess even like a Colossal Dreadmaw is pretty bad. Oh, another Basilisk. Okay, anytime my opponent plays multiple Basilisks, it definitely makes me think they have a Declared Dominance in their deck. Tormented Voice is a pretty good draw. I don't currently have land. I didn't activate Green Seeker. What is wrong with me? Just not paying attention. I'm going to go and activate now because I'd like to Torment and Voice away land if I did. Worth noting that I would have, you know, revealed Torment and Voice with Green Seeker, so that's not too big of a deal. I didn't miss out that time, but... Still just very wrong of me to not activate on my opponent's end step. Dreadmaw. So we're drawing that next turn. We could Rejuvenator and set up a different draw, or I could play just Bristling Boar. Um, I could even Torment in a voice away Rejuvenator. Let's see, if I attack with Rock's Oracle, what do they block with? Probably Daggerback Basilisk. Uh, I might actually go Torment and Voice away Rejuvenator, since we're very likely to hit a land anyway. I don't really need my 7th land. I don't need the 1-1 body. I think this is fine. Pitch Rejuvenator. Probably drawn to, like, uh, Colossal Dreadmall plus land or something like that. And that I'm pretty happy with. Yeah, exactly what happened. Trade this off and play Bristle and Boar. Just, again, trade off resources here. 
I'll start activating Green Seeker on my upkeep if I can. Yeah, I want Basilisk off board if I can before I play Colossal Dreadmaw. So I will jam. If they want to trade off like Onake Ogre, then that's fine by me. If they want to just take four, that's cool too. Okay, I'll trade for Dark Dweller. I'll play Bristling Vore. Now if they have um, Declare Dominance, I at least trade off both my creatures for Daggerback. It'd be a two for two and then get in with the rest of their creatures. But I have the Colossal Dread Maul to follow up with. Opponent does have two cards in hand. Uh, yeah, I'll trade off for Onake Ogre, I think. And then let's see if their 7 mana play is better than a Colossal Dreadmaw. Druid of Horns. Uh, activate on upkeep. I just don't want to draw lands if I can avoid it. Sorry for the slow pacing of this game, but not much I can do about it. Fire Elemental. Alright. Um... I mean, I'm just going to draw that Fire Elemental and play a Colossal Dreadmaw. Five, six. And pass. Druid the Horns could get nasty here. I've only seen one aura from them, but I mean, like a Blanchwood armor would be pretty strong. Make it a six, seven. I'd have to trade Colossal Dreadmaw and double block it. I think if they had an aura they could play, they would have played it the same turn. So I don't think their last card in hand is an aura, but they could draw into it. Um, they probably have at least one other armor, uh, aura, not armor. Uh, Daggerback can free roll an attack, but doesn't really make sense to do that. Go and activate on upkeep. As long as we're stable, I'm fine having this tapped on my opponent's turn. Meteor Golem would be a fine draw. Sarkin's Unsealing would be a good draw. Lands are good to reveal off of Dry Green Seeker. Ooh, this is this is painful to sit through. There we go. Good job, Green Seeker. Control for turn. <laughs> Always happens, right? Um, I think I'm gonna wait. I have Rabbit Bites in my hand in my deck. I have ways to get rid of this Basilisk. I really don't want to run into Declare Dominance, but I think given that um I have a couple removal spells and a Green Seeker going, and my opponent's not playing any fatties, I would rather not just throw away Colossal Dreadmaw. And another reason is if they do draw a good R to put on Druid of Horns, then I'm facing down a 3-3 and a big Druid with Fire Elemental. That's just really not where I want to be. So we'll, we'll see what happens. If I draw a Rapid Bite, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Just get this Death Toucher out of the way. It does kind of suck we have to wait 30 seconds every time we activate Dryad Green Seeker, but my opponent might just have a slow connection or something like that. Granted, they pass through their turn pretty quickly. We have a lot of good hits. And another Colossal Dreadmaul. That makes me more likely to attack here. Could be running into a Titanic Growth, but I think can't really avoid that. Let's go ahead and jam. Opponent has two cards in hand. I guess Electrify deals with Fire Elemental. Uh, yeah, let's get in there. I assume that's going to block here. Alright, no pump spell. And pass. Green Seeker's already drawn me two cards, which is fantastic. Opponent doesn't seem like they're drawing too much over there. And now, yeah, back against the wall. So, even one and one, playing for the trophy now. Naturalize still doesn't seem good. Sarkin looked pretty better that match, but they also didn't draw their big game creatures, and we did. I don't think I want Sarkin. Plummet would have been a bad draw though, right? They have multiple death touchers too, which is something to keep in mind. I just don't think Sarkin's going to be great. Like, imagine I play this on turn 3, but my opponent's uh, turn 3 play was uh, Centaur Courser. They just kill Sarkin, and it's fine. I think I'm just going to keep the high density of creatures 
Um, the plummet could just be like a hostile minotaur or something, right? None of these other cards seem like they're that good. Field Creeper doesn't seem good. Explosive Apparatus seems bad. Manolith seems not great. Yeah, I'll just leave the um, Plummet in the board. It is one of my only, like, real outs to Demanding Dragon. I have a couple removal spells, but it gives me another way to deal with it. Not that they have other Flyers in their deck, though. Okay. This is a good hand. It's definitely the type of hand that if my opponent has a normal start and not a super fast start, then we can keep pace with them. Draw in Green Seeker, please. I guess I can take the upkeep stuff. Ooh, that makes it a great hand. I just gotta hope my opponent doesn't um, get too far ahead of us too early. So, fingers crossed on no Druid of the Cow. No Druid of the Cow. Sarkins and Sealing into Inferno Hellion is very good. But if they ramp out a Colossal Dreadmall or a Demanding Dragon, then we're in trouble. They don't have a lot of two drops. They do have Dark Dweller Oracle and Druid of the Cow. See if they do. They don't have one. That's good for us. That means we're not ramping anything out. It's, they could have a turn three Rejuvenator, but that doesn't pressure us too much. It means we get to go Rejuvenator. They play a five drop. We play Sarkins and Sealing and hopefully get back in the game. Runic Armasaur. Oh, the actual mirror match. I'm not too worried about that. We'll keep it in mind. It also doesn't die to Sarkin's Unsealing, which is total boo-boo, but sometimes you gotta accept boo-boo, whatever that means. I don't mind it, though, because it doesn't actually pressure us that much. Five Toughness is hard to get through, but it doesn't attack us a lot, and I think we have such good late game that we're good. Plus, we do have Sarkin's Unseal and into Inferno Helion if they go, like, the small creature route. Um, kind of good. We're sending a Rabid Bite to the bottom, but we're not sending any of our big hits. And since we already have six mana in hand, I think this is where we want to be. We have three hits off Sarkin's Unseal. We are going to have to take a turn to actually play it. Yeah, we're not blocking. The four drop coming down. <laughs> Wow, okay. Um, if I had known, I would have brought in Naturalize. Alright, this got out of hand real quickly. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is going to be rough. Right now, we have a lot of good hits. Inferno Helion being a really good one, then it's going to add to the board, kill a creature probably, and also ding them. Uh, Rock's Oracle is going to go ahead and shoot us, I assume. We're going down to 12. Do I really want to give him the out of having three creatures? Oh, man. Um, I think Rejuvenator just makes me survive another turn against Darkens and Thielen. Th this is going to be an odd matchup. Very awkward matchup. Um, Thornhide Wolf seems like probably my best bet. I can shoot down Rock's Oracle. And then... Um, just block Armasaur, and then Sarkin's Unseal and can't shoot Thornhide Wolves back. We gotta hope our opponent gets a little unlucky here. Yeah, let's shoot their creature down. I'm secretly hoping to draw Meteor Golem, take care of Unsealing, and then go Inferno Helion plus Bristling Boar in the same turn. I think Meteor Golem is probably my best uh, card in this situation. Anake Ogre is strong. But we preserve that two life, so they've got to actually hit us three times or find another way to get in some damage. Rejuvenator. All right, this is pretty good. Inferno Helion's going to sweep all their non-runic Armasaur creatures. One, two, three, four. That's just going to go ahead and show them the business. And question, do I attack with Thornhide Wolves? They don't block, they go to 12. They hit me back for 2. No, I don't think I can afford to do that. Thud would be a fantastic draw, though. But that was very good. Uh-oh, here comes something big. <laughs> Gaspark Twins. All right. <laughs> All right. Gigantosaurus doesn't even do it for us here. I have to block that. Otherwise, they just have lethal with a big creature. 
<laughs> oh man, this is bad. We're gonna lose to a Sarkins on Seal and ironically. Um I think I have to go thud and or shoot this for four and thud it. And then I'm dead to a four power creature off the top of my opponent's library. Yeah, I thought we were doing good, but opponent also had the same bomb we did. This feels bad, but we have to. And then they sh hit us for two, and any creature, any big creature kills us. Plus, we're at the point where we're top decking anyway, so most little creatures kill us. It's going to sack itself, maybe? Oh, they also have lethal on board. Inferno Helion off the top. <laughs> sure. It technically gives us another turn, right? Oh, man. I think it's probably asking a little bit too much for my opponent not to hit some... Oh, Tectonic Rift? What a tech. All right, we're dead. Man, I wish I'd seen this in the other matches. All right, we lost to the straight-up mirror match. Look at this board. It's actually Runic Armasaur. <laughs> we both have Runic Armasaurs and Sarkins on Seelands. All right, well, we can't complain too much. We probably shouldn't have even won match two. And, uh... I hate that you can't check chat messages after the game's over. Oh, well. Uh, I can't be mad about losing that match. I had a lot of fun with this deck. We got to steal a game with Thud and Gigantosaurus, and we lost to basically the same card we've been winning with, so um, <laughs> not too much to complain about. Plus, we walked away with a Foil Sarkin, which I'm going to go ahead and turn into some tickets and hopefully turn that into more drafts. I hope you guys enjoyed watching yet another uh, red-green draft from me, since apparently that's all I can ever draft when I'm recording. And uh, yeah, it was super fun to play. I'll keep uh, drafting M19 while it's up. I'll keep opening Sarkins on Sealings. And thank you all for watching. My name is Timothy with Mana Rocks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.